Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. It's not going to be entirely about Lego, but more so Brixie. What is Brixie? Where do we plan on going with Brixie? How did we get here? And how did I make this happen? How did I make my dream happen? So there's a lot more than what meets the eye when it comes to this Lego business because it's not like I just sit around and build Lego all day. There's been a lot of planning and strategizing. And today, from a business perspective, we're gonna talk all about that. So the first thing I wanna say is, before you comment down below, just make sure you watch this video because we're gonna be talking about a lot of different points. And most likely, your questions in the comment section are probably gonna be talked about in this video. Another thing I wanna say before we get started with this discussion is the fact that I am not a professional chartered accountant, I am not a professional in finance, I am not a professional in operating a business, or well, somewhat I guess, I operate my own business, so I guess maybe I'm one of those, but I'm not really you know, the best guy in any of these fields, but today I just wanna to talk to you about the stuff that I've learned uh, throughout the years of me operating a business, and just the ins and outs of my company, what I've learned operating this company, and some of you might find this very informative. Some of you might find this very helpful and some of you might be really bored by it, but I think there's a lot of important information here that I'm gonna be discussing today. So I've always been very passionate about business from way back in the day, from trading Pokemon cards on the field to selling Pokemon cards to uh, selling things on eBay, uh, running my own e-commerce website, having a YouTube channel, building a giant Lego city and making content on it, which I guess can be monetized, which is absolutely incredible because I started collecting Lego and got into it in a big way. And then two years later, I found out that I could potentially maybe make this my full-time job. And I was able to do that in uh, 2007. Sorry, I was able to make it my full-time job in 2020. And here we are in 2023 doing it full-time, which is absolutely incredible. So I've got a little bit of knowledge about business. I actually went to Grant McEwen University here in Edmonton, and I didn't get the degree, but I got the diploma. I figured that was all I needed, uh, specifically uh, management studies. So I took some courses in all different uh, sectors, whether it be uh, marketing, uh, sales, organizational behavior, also accounting, chartered accounting, just a bunch of base level courses. So I had like a broad spectrum of information in all different sectors of business, and it was extremely helpful. I'm definitely happy that uh, I w went to school and learned this stuff. Specifically, it taught me how to work in teams, which was really fun because there's a lot of different team-oriented projects that I definitely learned a lot from. And actually, while I was in university, I decided to start my own company when I was 18 that specialized in buying and selling on eBay and also on an e-commerce website. It did fairly decently. I wasn't 100% focused on it because I went to school and I also worked a full-time job on the side. And I was a teenager, so I really didn't give it my all. Sort of one of my regrets, but I wish I gave it my all because I'm sure that company could be doing very well today if I was still operating it. And if I had the knowledge and skills that I have today and also the work effort that I have today, I'm sure that company would be doing fine. But here we are now in uh, 2023 operating Brixie, the social media slash digital media company, which is incredible because I've never had more fun working every day than I have today. So recently I decided that I wanna try and get more space for Brixie, whether it be an acreage with a building that has all the Lego in it, a commercial building, or just a bigger house with a bigger basement. So I wanna discuss the three different options in depth and why I've selected the commercial property. So I think the acreage idea is a really cool idea. You know, you have this acreage, the house that's on the acreage, and then I have a separate structure that has all of my Lego in it, and that's where I go to work. It's right close to the family, it's easy, but there are several reasons why I've decided against doing that. Reason number one is I don't wanna live out in the middle of nowhere. That doesn't really make sense to me. Being out of the city, a drive away from my parents, quite a drive away from you know a good movie theater or quite a drive away from the kids' school, 
quite a drive away from anywhere. So I just don't want to live out in an acreage anymore. I've just decided against it. I love where we are in the city and I love living in the city. Also, I thought about having this unique property that has a, a building on it and then all the Lego is in that building. But then I thought to myself, is that the best option? Because I have to go through the grief of constructing this large building on an acreage. Is that going to be easy? Probably not. It sounds rather difficult. And once that structure is built, it's a very specialized structure on that acreage. It makes that property very unique and therefore harder to sell and liquidate. So if I ever had to liquidate that property or if I wanted to move back into the city because I don't like living out on the acreage, it's going to be hard for me to recoup the money that I've invested in this property because now it has like this big expensive building on there which is very specialized and therefore very hard to sell. Also an acreage has a bigger plot of land, more grass to cut, more snow to plow. And that building, I'm just thinking about how difficult that would be to put the HVAC in there and the plumbing in there and how expensive that would be and how much grief that would cause me. I just think that it's harder than I originally anticipated because I'm not used to that acreage life. I'm not an acreage boy. I'm a city boy. Now the easy option would be just to buy a bigger house with a bigger basement and have more space for my Lego. The issue with that is one of the main reasons I want to move out onto a commercial building is so that I free up my basement so that we can put, I don't know, a sectional couch down here and a TV to watch hockey games on and maybe our workout area and a bunch of kids toys and then a little office over there where I can still do reviews and everything on Lego at home. So if I wanna work from home, I can still do that down in this basement. But I, I sort of wanna free up the basement so I can make like a nice little family area that has a little bit of everything. Right now our house is pretty full so I'm not able to make a room like that. And I think the only way to do that is to pretty much get all the Lego out of the house because if I move to a bigger house with a bigger basement, the same thing's gonna happen. I'm just gonna fill it up and we're gonna be jammed just like that, just like we did when we came down here. I, I built this place and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. We're never gonna run out of room. And then here we are three years later and we ran out of room. So I think if I move to a house, we're gonna run out of room once again. It would be cool because the Lego in my business is still in the basement, so I'm close to the family. But I think the commercial property is ultimately the best option. So the commercial property would be interesting because I would actually have to drive to work every single day. I would be whatever, 15, 20 minutes away. I wouldn't wanna go any further away than that, but 20 minutes away from my house, right? Which actually isn't the end of the world. It's only 20 minutes, you know, a lot of people drive to work every single day. I think I'm very lucky that I work from home, but I really don't foresee that being a problem driving to work. And actually I would be excited about it for a few different reasons. I think I would get into too much trouble in my vlogs driving to work and back home from work every single day. And I think my vlogs would be even better than they are because there would be the aspect of, hey, I'm at home. Okay, now I'm driving. Ooh, look, there's a Walmart. Let's pull into Walmart. Oh, look, there's a Toys R Us. Let's go to Toys R Us. Oh, I gotta go to the Home Depot and I've gotta buy this for the warehouse today because we're gonna be putting track shelving up here. So I think my vlogs would be a lot better because I'd have to drive to and from work every day and that would be included in my vlogs. Another reason I'm excited about potentially getting a commercial property is the fact that it is getting me out of the house. I know a lot of people say that you're so lucky that you work from home, but you gotta remember, I'm in my house, like I haven't left my house. Well, sometimes I don't leave my house for like seven days other than walking my dogs. So it's like, I'm like cooped up in my house and I don't really see a lot of people and don't really interact with a lot of people. And I think getting out of the house every day or whatever, four days a week or something like that would actually be positive in the end because I would be getting away from the house. Some people in the comment section are saying, well, you have twins, you gotta help raise your kids, you gotta stay home. It's not the ideal world. I mean, staying at home and raising your kids all day. It's not like I raise my kids all day. I'm down here working all day, right? I do run up once in a while and I help my kids. But the reality is I still help my kids in the morning before I go to the warehouse. And when I get back from the warehouse, I'm still help my kids at night. I'm still with my kids in the morning. I'm still with my kids at night when I get this commercial property. And also eventually my kids are gonna grow up, right? Eventually, I'm gonna have to drive them to school. So I you know, drive them to school. I drop them off at school, I go to work. 
oh, the kids are off school. I leave work. I drive them, pick them up from school. I drive them home or oh, whatever it is. They bus home. I see them later that night. I used to drive to work every single day, six days a week. It is what it is. It's not the end of the world driving to work. I'm not too concerned about it. And like I said, I think it's going to increase or improve the quality of my vlogs and give us even more content. Even the content in the warehouse is going to be insane, right? The amount of things that we can do and on in a, a space that feels unlimited is going to be awesome. So that's part of the reason why I've decided that I want to move to a commercial property rather than an acreage. I want to stay in the city. My kids are still going to be close by. The drive to work sounds fun to me. Getting out of the house sounds fun to me. And hey man, the kids can come on by my warehouse and we can have fun together over there. It's not like they can't come over there. Oh, let's take, I'll just take my kid to work. Okay, you guys want to come hang out? No problem. Okay, come hang out on the couch. We'll put a TV there. You guys can watch some TV while I'm doing my work downstairs. Oh, you want to come hang out with dad in the Lego warehouse? So be it. I just think it would be so neat to leave my house every day and go to my place of work. I just think that would be so incredible. And the warehouse does offer us uh, a lot of different opportunities as well. I'm going to talk about that down the line. Uh, just different places that my company could go. But the main one I want to talk about is having public viewings of the warehouse slash museum of Lego. Now, a lot of people were concerned that I showed the address of the warehouse that I potentially wanted to buy. I'm not buying that one. I've already found better ones and I don't have financing lined up. Once again, more about that later on in this video, the financing of all of this. But something I could add to this business is specifically public viewings of the warehouse. I could charge admission to come in on Saturdays. I could open it up to the public. They could come in and I could charge admission. So I'm not really too concerned about if people know where my warehouse is full of Lego. It's going to be fully insured. It's going to have a security system. It's going to have bars on the window. If somebody goes in there and starts robbing the place, it's going to take a heck of a long time for them to rob the entire place. And I don't think anyone's going to do that. Knock on wood. I don't think anyone's gonna do that. And if they do, it's gonna take them a heck of a long time and I've got it all on camera and I'll call the authorities and we'll go over there and say, hey, can you stop loading your truck full of Millennium Falcons, please? Thank you so much. And it's all insured anyway. I mean, there are other companies out there that have a lot more inventory out in the open than me, the Lego YouTuber. There's a Lego store full of Lego, right? There's freestanding buildings Whatever, there's car dealerships with cars all over the place. There's a lot of assets on their dealership lot and they're not too worried about it. So I'm not really too worried about the security of it because we'll have all the right systems put in place. And I think we're gonna be doing public viewings on Saturdays when I move to this commercial building anyway. I think I've covered all my points about why I prefer a commercial property versus a larger home and an acreage. I might have missed some things. Ah, this is something I forgot about and now I'm including it in this video. Also in regards to buying a commercial property, why is that good? because real estate trends in value. Generally speaking, it goes up and down, but over a long period of time, it goes up in value. So that's why it's also a good move to buy a commercial property rather than a specialized acreage that does go up in value, but now it has this really weird building on it that makes it hard to sell. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is how am I gonna go about affording this commercial property that's probably going to cost anywhere between three and four hundred thousand Canadian dollars. There were some comments that say, how do you just have three hundred and sixty thousand dollars laying around to buy a warehouse? How do you afford that? Well, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't. It, it's all done through financing and mortgages, right? The only thing that I need to come up with is a down payment. How do I come up with a down payment? Back in the day, I saved up a bunch of money and I bought my original house with a down payment and I mortgaged that house. I think the mortgage was $240,000 for that mortgage there. And what I did is I just paid all my excess income into the mortgage. And then what happens is all of that money that I put into the said mortgage becomes equity in the home. So then what I did when I wanted to buy this house is I pulled that equity out through a HELOC, which is a homeowner's uh, equity line of credit. So then I was able to pull out all of the equity from that property, which then I used the money to buy this house. So what I did is pulled the equity out. I used that equity to put a down payment on this. Now I have two mortgages and a maxed out HELOC or homeowner's equity line of credit. 
So then what I did is I rented out the rental and I charged enough rent at that rental to pay the mortgage at the rental and to pay the monthly payment on the homeowner's equity line of credit that I used to put the down payment on this house. So now that rental property is paying the mortgage and also all of the equity that I pulled out and it gave me a bigger spot to live. So now three years later, what I've done is I've taken all of my excess income and I've paid off the homeowner's equity line of credit because that has a higher interest rate than this mortgage and the other mortgage. So I can now spend that again on another property. And it just sort of snowballs, right? And eventually you can buy more and more properties because you had one, that's the hardest one because that's what you're living in. So paying that off is the hardest one. But then when you pull the equity out, you can buy a second one and then you can continue to repeat that process. And the more you have, the easier it becomes because now you're gaining more equity in more properties. So right now I'm gaining equity in my rental property. I'm gaining equity in this property. And technically what I could do is refinance this property and pull out the equity of this property that I've gained a whack of equity in in the last three years. And I could use my homeowner's equity line of credit. And I've also gained enough equity in the, uh, I've said equity a lot, but I've gained enough equity in the rental property that I could actually increase the size of the homeowner's equity line of credit that I already have available for use. Crazy, hey? So yeah, that's the way I was able to buy my original property and then buy this property here. Now, what do I plan on doing for this commercial property? There's a few different things that I could do. A, I could just rent a commercial property because then everything be a write-off and more about write-offs and the company structure later on in this video. But what I could do is rent a property and then everything will be a write-off against Brixie's income, which should be smart. It's not a huge risk because I can just, well, I'd have to commit to a lease because you can't just pull out of a lease, but I'd be whatever, two, three, four, five year lease that I'd be committed to. So I guess there's a risk in the fact that there is a lease that I have to commit to. Now, another thing that I could do rather than renting is buy a property, which I discussed earlier in a different video. Now, how I'd probably buy that property, I'm not an expert in any of these fields, okay? There's definitely people that are better at this than I am. I'm just using, once again, the knowledge that I have. So what I would do probably to buy the commercial property based on where I'm at right now is first off, save as much money as I can in the Brixie bank account so that it can put a down payment. But what I'd probably do is actually open a second company. And this second company would be a holding company. So it'd be just like Brixie. Brixie's a numbered company, more on that later. But it would be a holding company that is specifically there to purchase this property. And what would happen is, is this, pro this company would buy the warehouse and that company would deal with all of the mortgages and the uh, money lending and the financials of that. And that company would rent the warehouse to Brixie. So then Brixie could write off the rent and this company over here can earn money off of Brixie. That's probably how I would do it. It's a holding company. It's very common with real estate and commercial real estate. So I'd open up a numbered company, that numbered company would buy the warehouse and then it would deal with all the finances. It would charge rent to Brixie and it would make a little bit of profit off of Brixie and Brixie could write off the rent. That's how I would probably buy it. I think it's better than uh, Brixie just renting a place because now this numbered company is doing exactly what I did with my first house. It is renting it to Brixie, it is paying off the mortgage uh, and paying off the property taxes and, the, and all that different stuff and the condo fees and all that stuff. And it's gaining equity in that property and then it could eventually do exactly what I did when I bought my first house and bought my second house. It could eventually buy more commercial properties and rent them to different people. And then you have this different company that is actually generating, generating revenue and equity by renting commercial properties. So that's probably what I would end up doing when it comes to buying a commercial property. So that pretty much covers the financing aspect on the properties. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the company structure. That's the Brixie company structure. So you all know that uh, Brixie is a company. I have a numbered company. It's actually a corporation. It's an Alberta corporation. It has a GST number. It has to remit GST. 
it has to, the GST is general sales tax here in Canada, it has to pay corporate taxes, and it has currently three employees. So I am an employee of Brixie. Jose is an employee of Brixie, and Simon is an employee of Brixie. So what happens is all of the revenue from all the different streams, whether it be uh, e-commerce, uh, YouTube ad revenue, whatever it is, comes into Brixie. And then Brixie pays me, pays Jose, pays Simon, and we all pay personal taxes on the salary that we get from Brixie. So the main expense of Brixie is paying its employees, but it also has lots of other expenses. Buying Lego, buying the wood for these tables, buying other tables, buying parts from Bricklink, that's Lego, but also has to pay a percentage of the taxes and also the interest rates on the house and also a percentage of the utilities on the house because it's technically taking up 33% of my house. So it actually has to pay that stuff. All of those things are write-offs. What is a write-off? So a write-off is essentially anything that comes off the taxable income. Uh, say your company makes $10,000 and your, you spend $5,000 on Lego. Okay, well now your company only made $5,000. So it's just a write-off, it comes off your taxable income. At the end of the year, you only pay tax on what's remaining in the company. Everything else is a pretty much an expense, just like the rent would be if I rented a place for Brixie. Yeah, so that's essentially how the corporation works. It's essentially how any corporation works. Uh, you have all of your revenue come in, right? And then you have all of your expenses, whether it be employees, uh, Lego, whatever it is, and then whatever you have left at the end of the year is actually your profit and that's what you get taxed on. And actually, Brixie as a corporation has a lower tax rate than me as an individual, so it's actually better to keep it in the company and pay less tax. However, with that said, I have mortgages and stuff that I wanna pay, so it's a fine numbers game of paying me the right amount so I pay less tax. And actually, I'm in a very beneficial spot for that because I have Jose and me, so we're actually able to income split. Therefore, we're in lower tax brackets, so we actually pay less tax because we split our income. It sort of is a loophole, but not really because we're both employees of the Brixie company. Pretty neat, eh? Pretty interesting. It's a little bit different. Eventually, I'm going to be moving to a commercial property. I've already decided that we will be doing that. Uh, it is a big stepping stone. It is rather expensive. There will be more expenses with more insurance, more heat, more electricity, uh, a bigger mortgage payment or a bigger rent payment. There is more expenses, definitely. Uh, but I think it's going to be very beneficial for the company because it's just going to produce better content. We're going to have more space. We're going to produce better stuff. We're going to have way better scenes. These scenes are going to be out from un underneath the table. There's going to be epic things absolutely everywhere in this large commercial property where we have unlimited space to build awesome stuff. So I'm very, very excited about that. If YouTube fails, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm not roped into this commercial property. That's the nice thing, right? Like I said with the acreage, the acreage would be really hard to sell because it has this big specialized building on it that isn't very attractive to a buyer. Whereas if I buy a, a um, commercial property, it's gonna be a lot easier to sell. So if YouTube fails and I have to liquidate easy to liquidate the property, get rid of it, it is what it is. Or I could just rent it out to somebody different and keep it and maybe have that as a, a source of income. It's probably what I would ultimately do unless I was really in a pickle, which I don't think I would ever happen because if YouTube ever fails, which I don't think it would ever would, knock on wood again there, uh, what I could do is other things like um, change into Lego sales. I could open up a brick bin style store or a brick kingdom style store. I could do that. I could do private tours or private uh, uh, whatever viewings in in the museum like Lego area. I could uh, do a di different website that specializes in subscription service videos. I could charge a subscription so that you get my videos if YouTube fails, but I don't think YouTube's ever gonna fail. It's a Google company, Google's too big to fail but maybe government regulation will squeeze us out. I don't know. I don't think that'll ever happen, so I don't think there's anything to worry about in that regard, but I think there's lots of different things that I could do to survive if YouTube ever failed. It's a big move moving to a warehouse, and it's uh, not really a huge risk, to tell you the truth, because the warehouse is always saleable. I know real estate is technically a liability because it costs you money, but in my opinion, it's 
for savings and it is like a separate bank account that you're storing equity away in and at the same time it fluctuates with the prices of houses housing and commercial properties yeah so there's a lot more than what meets the eye here in the Brixie company a lot of structure and a lot of financial planning that has gone into this and a lot of years of hard work starting way back in the day with my original property and my starting way back in the day actually with my original company because a lot of the revenues from my original company actually went into buying the Lego and starting this company. <laughs> but luckily for me, I love Lego and I love building my Lego city and I love making YouTube videos. So I'm like, I'm really ecstatic about how things are going and where I plan on going in the future. And I can't wait to work really hard to continue growing and continue doing awesome, fun stuff. Everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. I hope you enjoyed this completely random video about the financial side of Brixie and the business side of Brixie. Thank you so much and farewell.